Hi everyone, my name is Marius Koges, and in this video I'm going to present to you our work on scalable and fault-tolerant data center services with Hovercraft. This work is done while I was a PhD student at TPFL, and then I was supported by the Microsoft Swiss JRC. Hovercraft was presented at Eurosys 2020, where it got the Best Student Paper Award. So, in this talk I'm going to focus on data center services that are characterized by the following. On the one hand, we're talking about microsecond scale computing, which is backed by fast data center networking. So in a data center, you can find lengths up to 100 gigs. And given the size of the data center, this gives us just a handful of microseconds route trip times. To keep up with this fast I.O., you can see the emergence of more and more program uh, carried by bus uh, frameworks such as DPDK and also in-network programmability with new merging programming languages such as before. In the application space, we have applications such as Redis and MemcasD that serve data directly uh, of memory to further reduce the end-to-end -end latency. And these applications need to operate under very strict service level objectives for their tail latency. On the other hand, failures are pretty common inside the data center. Often enough, it makes it to the news that some failure led to long down times affecting several customers. So we need to build systems that are can operate in a microsecond scale and at the same time they're fault tolerant. A common design pattern for fault tolerant applications suggests using a state machine replication library embedded inside the application. This way every application that needs to be fault tolerant has to take special care. Hovercraft though follows a different design. In Hovercraft we incorporate state machine replication inside the transport layer and provide fault tolerance at the RPC boundaries. So Hovercraft forwards an RPC to the application layer only when the, this RPC has been committed. In order to do that, we had to depend on a transport layer that exposes this uh, RPC semantics, and for that we used RTP2. So RTP2 uh, is uh, a prior work that I did during my PhD, that, uh, and it's a new transport protocol for data center RPCs that is specifically designed for uh, in-network RPC policy enforcement. RTP2 exposes the request and response abstraction both to the endpoints and the network. So by using RTP2 and uh, incorporating state machine replication inside the transport protocol, fault tolerance becomes yet another uh, RPC policy that is implemented uh, inside RTP2. Also, the fact that we used RTP2, and, uh, which is a transfer protocol, enabled us to use uh, further optimizations such as IP multicasting or using programmable switches to, to handle the the, the state master replication quorum that we wouldn't be able to use otherwise. After having such an application agnostic solution that allow us to build generic fault tolerant RPC services without any code modifications, we focused on the performance characteristics of state master replication and we tried to analyze it as a workload. The problem with state master replication is the following. In a scalable system, adding nodes can improve uh, the achieved throughput. However, in a fault tolerant system, we observe exactly the opposite behavior. We run Raft, which is a widely used state machine replication algorithm with different cluster sizes. And we observe that as we add nodes, although fault tolerance increases, the achieved throughput under the latency SLO decreases, as you can see in, in this figure. Obviously, that's not a favorable behavior. The question we're trying to answer here is, how can we leverage redundancy both for fault tolerance and scalability? To answer this question, we need to take a closer look at Raft's communication pattern. So in this example, we have a client, a leader, and two followers, which means that we can tolerate one failure. When the client uh, wants to send an RPC, first it sends this re uh, request to the leader, and the leader is in charge of replicating this RPC to the two, two followers. Once the followers receive this RPC, reply back to the leader, and once quorum is collected, the leader executes the RPC and sends back the reply to the client. However, this communication pattern can suffer from different bottlenecks. The first one appears in cases of large client requests. In this case, when the client request is uh, large, the leader has to replicate those large requests and this can lead to an, uh, an IO bottleneck at the leader. Another bottleneck comes from large client replies. In this particular case, uh, the reply to a specific RPC is quite large, and then the leader, because it's the only one that needs to uh, has to reply back to the client, can again become an IO bottleneck. 
The third bottleneck comes from the execution of operations that don't change the state machine state at the leader. In this, for example, read-only operations. And in this case, the leader becomes a CPU bottleneck because it has to run these uh, operations to reply back to the client. The last bottleneck I would like to mention includes cases where the number of followers increases. In this case, again, the leader needs to replicate to uh, all the, the followers the incoming requests and also needs to get back the replies from, uh, from the followers, which leads to an increased packet processing uh, requirements from the leader's perspective, which ends up being a CPU bottleneck. So in Hovercraft, we individually tackle with each one of these bottlenecks and we design around them. So let's start with the first one, the one with the big client requests. Hovercraft separates the request data and metadata and uses different ways of, uh, to replicate the request data and then the leader only communicates request metadata regarding uh, the ordering of this request. Specifically, we use IP multicasting to replicate the incoming requests. Now for the second bottleneck, the, the one with the big client replies, we load balance the nodes that are going to reply back to the client. So the leader is in charge of delegating which node is going to send back the reply to the client instead of just uh, replying, um, uh, instead of just the leader replying back to the client. Also, the execution of the read-only operations uh, is load balanced in Hovercraft and only the node that replies back to the client executes these read-only operations. Note that for the load balancing decisions, we strongly depend on the fact that Raft uses a strong leader that has a global view of the cluster and this leader is in charge of making the load balancing decisions and these decisions are better because of this, uh, uh, because of this global view. Finally, we use programmable switches to uh, handle the fan out and fan in of the, uh, the state master replication communication pattern so that the leader does not have to do all the, the packet processing and avoid the, the CPU bottleneck in, in this particular case. So now let's dive into Hovercraft communication pattern. As before, we have the client, the leader, and the two followers, but now we also add a generic switch that is capable of IP multicasting and a programmable switch. Now, the client, instead of sending the request directly to the leader, it sends this request to a multicast group that goes through uh, the, the first switch, and this incoming request gets replicated to all the nodes in the cluster. The leader orders this incoming request and then communicates re request metadata regarding uh, this ordering. But instead of sending this information directly to the followers, sends this information to the programmable switch. The programmable switch picks the right multicast group and communicates this ordering information to the followers. Now the followers, once they receive this incoming information, they reply back to the switch instead of the leader so that the switch can absorb uh, this, uh, the, the high packet I.O. from uh, the, the follower messages. The switch is in charge of collecting the quorum and once the quorum is collected, the switch notifies everyone that uh, this specific request is committed. And then the dedicated uh, replier executes the request and uh, sends back the reply to uh, the client. You can find more information about Hovercraft and Hovercraft++ in our Eurosys paper that due to time limitations I cannot get into, but please uh, read the paper. Now, I would like to spend some time on a specific evaluation that we did. We wanted to evaluate the cluster size impact on the achieved throughput under the latency SLO. And for that, we ran a synthetic micro benchmark with a fixed service time of one microsecond, and we varied the number of nodes in the cluster. We plot the achieved throughput under the SLO of 500 microseconds for different cluster sizes and three fault tolerant configurations. We use vanilla raft, hovercraft, and hovercraft plus plus that leverages the in network programmability to handle the uh, fun in and fun out. First, we observe that with a cluster size of three, all configurations achieve close to the optimal throughput of one million uh, requests per second. Now, as we increase the number of followers, the performance of Hovercraft++ remains more or less steady at one million requests per second, while the other configurations degrade. That's because the P4 switch can absorb the packet processing overhead. So to sum up, I presented Hovercraft, that's a system that provides application-agnostic fault tolerance at the RPC boundaries, 
by integrating state machine replication inside the transfer protocol, RTP2 in our particular case. Horrorcraft achieves this scalability and fault tolerance by leveraging techniques such as IP multicasting and in-network programmability. Also, Hovercraft is open source and you can find it in our GitHub repository. With this, I would like to conclude my talk and I'm happy to take the, your questions during the live session. Thank you.